So I wanted to go ahead and analyze the uh, amazing sermon, shocking youth message by Paul Washer that was preached many, many years ago. If you haven't seen this video, which you should have, I posted the link to it in the description. So watch it after this video. But uh, the part, I think the most important part of the sermon in itself is great, but I think the, the key point is when he basically counters all the applause from the audience and says, no, I'm talking about you. And the key point I want to talk about in regards to this is delusional. Okay. It's delusion. Everyone in that audience, after Paul Washer made that amazing point, they were cheering, they were clapping, they were whistling. They were, they thought that they were all on the same accord. They thought that they were in line with what Paul Washer was talking about and that the people he was talking about were out in the world and that they were all, all fine. But no, he cut that short and let, let it be known that, no, I'm talking about you. Okay. And delusional. What is the definition of the word delusional? Characterized by or holding beliefs or impressions that are contradicted by reality. Okay. So Paul Washer contradicted their reality with the truth. And it shocked everyone. It stopped them in their tracks. Second Thessalonians 2.10. They perish because they refuse to love the truth and to be saved. For this reason, God sends them a powerful delusion so that they will believe the lie and so that all will be condemned who have not believed the truth, but have delighted in wickedness. Okay. And so I, I personally have dealt with a lot of people back and forth through emails who refuse to submit to what the Bible says about a text or what the Bible says regarding a particular topic or issue because they do not like what the Bible says. They don't like what they've heard. So rather they put their own twist on it and they, they, they believe that it's a delusion and it's rooted in pride and self-love. It's about what I want. It's about what I want the Bible to say. It's about what I want God to be like or for him to be okay with. It's about making God in my own, my, my own image. And that's why God says for that reason, he sends a strong delusion. So ultimately we see so many people are out here believing a lie and they're okay with it because at the root of it, it's about their own self will and their own self love. And ultimately, unless you repent of this, humble yourself and repent of this, you go, you go to hell, you die in your sin. Okay. Because one of the attributes about true Christians is we've submitted unto the teachings of the scriptures, regardless of how it made, make, make, make us feel. We may not like it. I remember my first time reading the Bible, my first year through the Bible. There were a lot of things I didn't like that I read. Like, uh, and a lot of stuff that I read contradicted what I thought about God. And I had to check myself. I had to check myself. And I had to say, it's not about me. It's not about what I like or, or what I think it should be. It's about what the Lord has laid forth. And I got to accept it. I got to accept it. And so you got to check yourself. So I'm going to go ahead and play the clip. Uh, it's, it's an amazing clip. And if you haven't seen the sermon, the link is in the description. I watch things I shouldn't watch on television and laugh about the very things that God hates. I wear clothing that is sensual. I talk like the world. I walk like the world. I love the music of the world. I love so much that's in the world. But bless God, I am a Christian. Why am I a Christian? I don't look any different than most of the other people in my church. Why am I a Christian? Because there was a time in my life when I prayed and asked Jesus Christ to come into my heart. I want you to know that the greatest heresy in the American evangelical and Protestant church is that if you pray and ask Jesus Christ to come into your heart, he will definitely come in. You will not find that in any place in Scripture. You will not find that anywhere in Baptist history until about 50 years ago. What you need to know is that salvation is by faith and faith alone in Jesus Christ. And faith alone in Jesus Christ is preceded and followed by repentance. A turning away from sin, a hatred for the things that God hates and a love for the things that God loves. A growing in holiness and a desire not to be like Britney Spears, not to be like the world, and not to be like the great majority of American Christians, but to be like Jesus Christ. I don't know why you're clapping. I'm talking about you. I didn't come here to get amens. I didn't come here to be applauded. I'm talking about you.
The Reformation was founded upon sola scriptura. And I want you to know, brethren, I love the Reformers. I love to read the Reformers, but I'm really getting tired of that language. The Reformers didn't call themselves Reformers. They just wanted to be biblical. And you can sit in Starbucks all day long with your skinny jeans on and talk about Reformers, or you can pick up a Bible and start getting biblical. And I don't know why you're clapping. 